Hey there, fellow wackadoos. Once again, tis I, Dr. Doodle, your guide and chief nut job in these here parts. Hello again, and welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Cubasic Asylum, the YouTube page where we sit around and talk about pro. Nope, nope, not doing it. Promised myself I wasn't going to do it. Because, you know, I went back, looked over the last all five episodes, and the whole programming gag. It's just done to death. It was pretty infantile to begin with, frankly. So from this point forward, no more of that farm toolery. Instead, we'll be having dignified and mature discussions on computer programming. Incubatic! I had to, sorry. It is, after all, the asylum. Yeah, hey, so listen. Hello and welcome to episode... Six. Oh, episode six. I call it a bit about a bite. Get it? A bit about a bite. Well, stay tuned. Check it out. Here's, check it out. Well, so this will be... Uh, bit different episode this time, a quickie really. I uh, won't really actually be talking about programming topics at all. In fact, instead, uh, we'll be talking about something near and dear to every computer geek's heart. I'm sure you've heard of it if you're watching programming uh, videos. And that would be binary. And I'm sure you've heard of it, probably know it has to deal with ones and zeros, computers use it, but maybe you're not sure really how it works, what it's all about, and why computers use it. So that's what this episode is about. We'll be talking about bits and bytes, among other topics. So what are bits, bytes, and all this? Well, a bit, for those unaware, most you probably know, but a bit is simply a one or a zero. And the word bit is not arbitrary. It's a contraction of binary digit. Bit, binary, digit, bit. Okay, so let's take a look at figure number one here. If I can zoom, zoom in here a moment. Uh, maybe this way. There we go. Can we see this? Okay, yeah. So here we go. Uh, get some. All right. About the best lighting. Oh, oh, this lighting is crap tonight. Maybe shadow. How about this? Hmm. This is not going well for me. You know what? I'll turn the fan off. By the way, if I look like I'm hot and I'm sweaty, it's because it's hot and I'm sweaty. Hang on a second. All right, as I mentioned, this episode is called A Bit About a Bite, and the term bit is not actually, uh, our, what? look at my Bill Hawker. Wow, these shade, shadows here are crazy. Anyway, so, right, there's a bit. That's a bit right there. It's either a one or a zero, a single binary digit, bit. Now, you get four of those bits together, they're called a nibble. Eight bits are called a bite. And bite, nibble, get it? Yeah, computer nerds, what do you want? Anyway, so we've got one, one or zero is a bit, four ones or zeros are a nibble, eight are a byte, and then typically two bytes are called a word. Now it's usually 16 bits or two bytes, can be 32 or four bytes depending on your heart. And what? God, I need a nose job. This schnoz is just, anyway. So four bytes, I'm sorry, two bytes or four are typically called a word. Now in older systems with a 16-bit bus, they can move only 16 digits at a time, and hence a word. Every, every each piece of information they can move was called a word. Now with 64-bit and higher computers, they can move 32 bits, 64. So a word is typically either two bytes or sometimes four, up to eight, depending on, like for a video. Video is requires a lot of data, so they'll typically move 64 bits or four bytes two words actually at a time so in any case that's what the terminology is one one or zero a bit four are a nibble eight are a byte and two bytes or four as we mentioned are called a word but that whatever it, it depends on the hardware that you have if you have a 16-bit bus then it's two two bytes if you have the 32-bit then it's four bytes then etc so what exactly how how does bit a binary work anyway I and mean, you i mean well, we're all familiar with decimal, so let's take a look at the decimal here. Well, actually, if this was decimal, what do we got here? I don't know if you can see the top row right, right there. Yeah, this top row. Well, these. Oh, actually, no. These are. Well, the top row is just zeros. Okay, and now we've got next row. All these zeros into one, so that's one. All these zeros, but now we got one zero. So 10 in decimal, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 100, 1,000, 10,000, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, well, yeah, right up here it shows, uh, well, geez, I got, hold on, let me, 
Let me move this camera up here. Or actually, just zoom out of here. There we go. This will do. So, as I was saying, in decimal, what we got is all the zeros up here. They're obviously zero. Now, here's a pile of zeros and a one. That's a one, obviously. A bunch of zeros. One zero would be ten. One zero zero. You know the drill. 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, etc. Well, why is that? Well, if you notice, this first column, that's ones. So if you have one there, that's one. And then this is the 10 column. So if there's a one there, that's now it's just one. It's one set of 10, 10. And then over here, that's 100. So if you have a one here, it's one set of 100. And each time you move to the right, you multiply the one by 10. Binaries, pretty much identical, except that Two through nine, they don't exist. You go from zero to one, and then back to zero to one, back to zero to one. And each time we go to a new column, we multiply not by 10, but by two. So here's like times one, times two, times four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take a look at this again. Zeros, of course, all zeros. The first one, that's in the ones column, so that's just a one. What's this here? Zero, 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 one, zero. Looks like 10 in decimal, but look, in, in binary, that's two, because each time we go to the left, we move, multiply by two. So one, two, and then a one here would be four, eight, 16, 32, 64, uh, 128, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, again, it's the same as decimal, except two through nine don't exist. You go from zero to one, back to zero to one, back to zero to one, if you're counting up. Uh, and instead of multiplying by 10 with each column, we multiply by 2. So great, we got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. What if we need, uh, say, 5? How would we do that? Well, we can get a 1, we can get a 2, a 4, that's close. 8 is too big, so we don't want anything over this side. But a 4, and what if we added 1? Well, isn't 4 plus 1 5? So then 5 would be 1, 0, because we have no 2s, 1, 0, 1. Uh, 12, for example. Well, uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Oh, that's too many. We just, it's got to be in the first four digits. 1, 2, 4, 8. Okay, 8 is less than 12. What if we add 4? Well, 8 plus 4 is 12. So great. 1, 1. No, no 2s, no 1s. 1, 1, 0, 0 is 12. Uh, basically, you just add whatever you need. So you multiply by 2 if you're looking for, I don't know, um, 15. What would that be? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Well, that's close, but that's 1, 2 high. So we need to go back here. 8, well, what we need now? We need 7, right? So 8 plus 4, that's 12. Plus 2 is 14, and 1 is 15. So 1, 1, 1, 1 is 15 in binary. Simple as that. Just remember that 2 through, zero, two through 9 don't exist. You count from 0 to 1, back to 0 to 1, back to 0 to 1. And then just instead of multiplying by 10, you multiply by 2. Uh, in, in decimal, for example, if you want 101, it would be 101. Same with decimal, except there would be 4, 0, 1, or 5. So you just add up the 1s, whatever column you need. You put a 1 in that, in that column, and then add them up. That's what your number is. Okay, so here we go. Counting in binary. This is, as I explained before, we start with all zeros. Okay, and then we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Well, that's a 1 in the 1's column, so it equals 1. Again, we move over to the, to the left 1 spot here. Well, that's not 10, that's 2 because it's binary. You multiply by 2. 2, 0, well, that's 1. Or, that's 2, excuse me. Now we've got da, 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 2 plus a 1 is 3. Move over 1, this is a 4 column, so 4 plus nothing else is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 4 plus 2 now, remember, because we're 1, 2, this is the 2 column. 4 plus 2 is 6. Add one more, 4, 2, and 1, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc., etc., etc. That's basically how binary works. Now, as for why we use binary, well, it, it computers, let me hold on just a moment and I'll get back on my ugly mug. One second. Hooray, I'm back, lucky you. Well, anyway, as I was saying, uh, computers use binary. I'm sure you've heard that. Why? Well, if, it might surprise you to know that binary is every, actually hundreds of years old. Long, it was around long before computers were ever, or at least electronic computers were ever around. 
Now the thing with computers is they don't really think all they know is voltages. If a certain part of a signal, a circuit has a voltage, a high voltage, maybe five volts, maybe 10, depends on the system. If there's a voltage there, then that's on. It's a one or a true or yes. If it's off, then there's there's no voltage, that's a zero, that's false, that's, you know, whatever you want, off, no. Uh, and now it can, sometimes a voltage may be three and a half volts. Is that a yes or a no? Well, it can be tough. So computer systems, unlike analog, where you got a continuous from zero all the way up to maximum voltage, it could be any value in between there, but it's kind of tough because there's noise in the background, shh, a little noise like in an audio uh, signal, but also in digital signal there's, there's pops, power surges on the power lines. Uh, you got electromagnetic interference from, from uh, what is it, fluorescent lights. So they've decided that with computer systems, we'll have a threshold, maybe say three volts. Anything over that, we'll just pump five volts in there, that'll be a one. And then less than that, call it zero, we'll just turn it all off together. This way, it's a definite yes or no. There's no guesswork. Is, is that a one or is it a zero? They, the threshold's approximately three volts, so they make sure they pump either five volts well over the threshold or zero volts down below the threshold. It's very definite, it's on or off. And as we just saw, using ones and zeros, we can represent any number we want to. Of course, we'll need scads of digits, lots and lots of digits, but bits, I should say, since binary, not digits, but bits, we need lots of them, but with enough bits, you can represent any number there is. Okay, so we got numbers covered. What about, uh, what about letters, things like that, punctuation? Well, there's something called the ASCII code that's American, um, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Yeah, ASCII. And that has assigned a specific number to a specific character. For example, uh, I forget the bit pattern, but a certain bit a number, of, a certain pattern of bits, ones and zeros, represents 65. Now the number 65 in ASCII represents a capital A. 66 is a capital B, 67 a capital C, etc. And then what, you add 26, or is it subtract 26? In any case, uh, another digit represents lowercase letters. Uh, other digits represent, of course, the digits one through nine, zero, uh, and then punctuation. In fact, there's even there's uh, punctuation for Russian, Chinese, different different languages and such. Uh, also, even uh, well, back in the day before graphics computer uh, graphic cards were invented, there were certain pseudo graphics characters like big blocks or diamond, diamonds, hearts, clubs, all those. You'll, you'll see those as we get programming. But the every character that can be printed on a computer has an ASCII equivalent code. So 1001010, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, whatever. Some code represents an A. Some re represents a capital D, whatever. And a computer file is simply a, a collection of all these all these bits that, uh, like a text file, for example, a certain pattern of ones and zeros adds up to or equates to the text that you read in a file. So that's binary in a nutshell. Uses ones and zeros to represent any number. And in computers, they have the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And you can look this all up if you want to. Just Google it. You'll find more information about it. In fact, Wikipedia, all the information you want there. But again, that's a bit about a pipe. Now, having said all that, uh, with this episode, we are, we, I am de debuting a brand new segment I call Superiors. What am I talking about? Well, guess what? Since I set up this, this YouTube page, I've been getting all kinds of emails from YouTube itself, the administrators, and congratulating me for being a YouTube content creator. How about that? I am a creator. Means that everybody else on these other YouTube pages, all these wonderful pages, there's so many great YouTube pages. I'm a YouTube junkie, I gotta say it. But every all these creators, they are now my peers. Peers. And I'm thinking, peer, come on. Any content creator out there on, on YouTube is gonna have something better than this steaming pile, right? So I tend to think of them not as my peers, but superiors. That's the yeah, superiors. So play on words, all right? Give me a break. So in this segment, Every week I'll be pointing out another programmer or Cubase. Well, actually, 
sadly there are not a lot of, of pages, YouTube pages uh, devoted towards QBasic or pro even programming, but there are a few good ones out there and I will be sure to give a, a shout out to those, those content creators. Uh, but you know, if you're like me, then God help you, but if you're like me, you've got a lot of different interests, all kinds of different things. And I'll tell you, there's so much great content on YouTube. So I've collected a bunch of, or I've found a bunch of creators, and collected a bunch that are my favorites, put it that way. And I will be giving a shout out to every one of them each episode in the superior section so that you can learn more. Because you see, here's the thing. I want my subscribers, both of them, I literally have two subscribers. One of them is my wife. But I want my subscribers to get the best information out there, even if it doesn't come from me. I don't care. I'm not looking for it. Oh, and I almost forgot. Make sure to leave comments down there because, you know, if I just scream at me if I'm doing something stupid or, or you have a question, say, hey, you, Dr. Doodle, how about, eh, and tell me what you need to know. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll find it out. I don't see. No skin off my nose. So, yeah, leave comments if you want and check out the superior segment coming up here because, oh, man some great stuff out there let me tell you there's some very cool people very and you know they share this information the goodness of their, i mean yeah sure they make a buck <laughs> good they deserve it they work hard at this stuff uh, but not like this mess so here's the deal roll wolf footage and we'll see the superior section i'll talk to you later bye Superior. hey kids well, as mentioned, this is the superiors section of the video, and in as much as this is the very first superior segment, I will be featuring my very first subscriber, the one and only Mr. Retro Nick. This fellow's a very groovy guy. I tell you what, this guy knows what he's doing. Now, his stuff, he hasn't got a lot of QBasic stuff, but what he has is very cool. He's got a lot of Amiga Basic, uh, some other uh, base languages, basic languages, basically. And uh, what he, he's got some very cool graphics functions that, like, if you're uh, creating an image, uh, flood fill, you can fill it with a particular color. Cool stuff there. Now, his stuff may be a bit advanced compared to what we've, we've been doing so far. But no harm in checking it out, tweaking it a little bit, seeing what happens, what makes it tick. And I tell you, when you get to the point where you're doing some graphics and such, he can teach you a lot. Again, it's, it's different languages. There's some cute basic. But the, the concepts are there, and he really, oh, he solidifies them. So, Retro Nick, you the man. Right, dude, well, here we go. Back to the show. Oh, by the way, I'll try and throw in a screen clip here. Oh, uh, screenshot? Yeah, screenshot, so you can see. And, of course, I'll leave a link. Anyway, thanks again, Retro Nick. And here we go, right back to this mess. Bye. Wait a minute, though. Here's the thing. I've been thinking. I never really, I end too strong, do I? Just kind of like, bye. So I need some kind of a, a definite sign off. You know, something, a trademark, if you will. So I come up with this. Hasta la pizza, baby. I don't know, it sucks, but it's all I got. See you, bye. Hasta la pizza, baby.